It just, it just gets me. And we talk about wealth. I, I've never seen kids. I tell you, kids these days, well, who is raising these kids? Who's raising them? Well, now I tell you, we was growing up. Uh, we didn't do that. Well, then why are you letting your kids do it? I tell you, we, go, we didn't back talk our mama. Well, why are you letting yours back talk you? I tell you, if I'd done that, my mama would have backhanded me. You backhand yours a time or two, they might shut up a little bit too. Woo, sweet lamb of God. Oh, dear God, help us. I, listen, folks, if this thing is changed, it's going to be our fault. God has not changed. The Word of God has not changed. The power of God is not diminished. And if we'll get a hold of God and get a hold of this Bible, we can have revival and pass this thing on to the next generation. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! And that's exactly by the grace of God what I want to do. Hallelujah. To God forevermore. Woo! Glory. Man, that fires me up. I'm telling you right now. But anyway, we're glad you're here. Good to have Brother Brian. Good to have Brother Jamie. Uh, don't know these fellows well, but we've got a great time of fellowship today. And, and uh, we just, well, God bless you. And thank you for coming, every last one of you. May God bless you and take a liking to you. Praise God is my humble prayer. Hallelujah. Well, let's turn to Psalm 106 tonight. Planes, they'll tell you now we're going to be taking off here in a few minutes. And we want you to get your seat belts on. Because we, or if you get to going, you know, and you hit a little turbulence, they'll tell you that light will come on. you got to put on your seat belt. Well, I must tell you in advance, we could hit some turbulence tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God, I don't know why I'm like this, but this is the way I am. Psalm 106, we're going to start reading at verse 1. Psalm 106, verse 1. We're going to start right there. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord, who can show forth all His praise. Ah, uh, praise God, you're standing, aren't you? Then I guess I better hurry here. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that Thou bearest unto Thy people. O oh, visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of the chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the Red Sea, revoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake that he might make his mighty power to be known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up. Uh, so he led them through uh, the depths as through the wilderness. He saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed uh, them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. They believed. They uh, then believed that his words. They sang his praise. Verse 13, they soon forget his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Verse 15, and he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. Brother Mike, would you ask God to help me tonight? If the Lord would help me tonight, I want to preach a little while on you got what you wanted. 
but you lost what you had. You got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. Amen. As, as I read this text, and God begins to tell of His goodness and His power to Israel, and He recounts to them what He did for them, brought them out of the Red Sea, or through the Red Sea, brought them out of Egypt, brought them through the Red Sea, fed them in the wilderness. There was not a feeble one among them. Gave a man, he said, I fed you with angels' food. Woo! I tell you right now, folks, listen, as many health people we got in this nation, if they could find out what they had in that manna, my Lord God, they'd start manna herb company tomorrow. They ate that stuff for 40 years, not one sick one among them. I don't know what God put in that, but He had all they needed right there in the manna wafers. Woo! Hallelujah! Huh? Yeah, it's better than royal jelly. Praise God, whatever that stuff is. That you hear them advertise bees and all, you know, all kind of herbs and stuff. And, and I don't know. But anyway, I know one thing. That man that ate that stuff and none of them got sick. There wasn't a feeble one among them. i tell you what I like to. The Bible said their shoes did not wear out. Man, I tell you, I really like that. I don't, I don't understand, Brother Ralph, I can buy a pair of shoes, and about three months later, i got to have them resold. I don't know if it's because I run so much or what, but I tell you, man, I think that they had shoes that lasted 40 years. I can't hardly get mine to last 40 days. And so their shoes didn't wear out, and the food was sufficient, and he gave them water, and he gave them manna, and he kept his hand upon their lives. Oh, my God, it seemed like to me that would have been enough that they would have never, ever wanted to have left the Lord. Amen. Come on here now. I, I, I don't know. I, I've seen and I, I go to church and I, I have never, ever understood why that someone would not want to serve God. Time. I'm going to need a little time tonight, all right? Praise God, I promise Scout by nine, so you may have to leave out if it gets too tired before you head out. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Well, now listen, to, I'll be done by then. Listen, I, 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 I get the idea sometime before come to church, and, and they get up and testify. And I, you know, I tell my people, I say, do you have anything good to say for the Lord? Now listen, I don't want to hear about your sick dog. Huh? I'm not worried about your finicky feeling. Huh? I'm not worried about your praying parent. Amen. Tell me something about God. Huh? Tell me something good about the grace of God. But folks, get up. And you would absolutely think that getting saved and serving God was the next thing to be diagnosed with terminal cancer. I got saved. And I'm on my way to heaven. And I've had a struggle all day. Y'all just pray like, hold on in. God have mercy. Shoo. Huh? I'm, I mean, listen. They just act like it. I haven't quit smoking. Oh, you poor thing. I feel so sorry for you. I have to get rid of that pit between my ribs and the feet and I spit that out and I say it. Oh, my God, could we play a song for you, you dear soul? Huh? I had to quit drinking when I got saved. My Lord, God have mercy. The greatest thing that ever happened to me was the day I got saved by the grace of God. Woo! I said the greatest thing that ever happened to me was the day I got saved by the grace of God. I'm happy to be saved in this place tonight. Woo! Lift your hands and praise Him.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. He brought me up out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock. He hath established my going. He hath put a new song in my heart, even a song of praise unto my God. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. The wicked shall hear it and be glad. Psalm 34. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Or Psalm 34 said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord and He heard me. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. I tell you, brother, it's a great thing to know God. It's a great thing to be saved. It's a great thing to be on the way to heaven. Woo! Woo! Glory to God. I ain't started yet. Hallelujah. Listen, I got saved. When I was just a young man, a young boy, God touched my life. You hear me? I have never had any drugs in my body. I have never drank any liquor, any beer, any wine. Hello? I've never been on dope. Come on here now. Are are y'all still here? I didn't lay around like an old dog with all kind of women before I got saved and got married. Come on here. You can serve God. You can be happy. You can have the joy of the Lord. You can sing. You can shout. You can rejoice in the God of your salvation. I guess his brother Dalton, he's famous for that one line that said, my worst day as a Christian is better than, uh, yeah, my worst day as a Christian is better than my best day as a sinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What I want to tell you tonight, I'm going to preach here in just a second, is there is no excuse for going back. There is no excuse to give up. My God, friend, you may get what you want, but you're going to lose what you had. Let's preach now. Let's look at America. Founded on the Bible. Founded on prayer. Founded by men who had a strong faith in God. I don't care what these wackos, they've been of the ACLU, they've been in any other stripe that were trying to secularize, secularize America. America was founded by men who believed in the God of heaven. Yes. They believed in the Bible. They believed in immorality. They believed that the Bible was the cornerstone of civilization. It was the building block of democracy. It was the foundation upon which this union must be built upon the Word of God. Yes, they did. Huh? Oh, brother, I... In the 60s, when I was just a young man, America began the revolution. Amen. I remember when the Beatles landed. Amen. And they went to singing, I want to hold your hand. Woo! Yeah, they did. They got to singing. Oh, Elvis got to swiveling his pelvis. He got called the king of rock and roll. And we began to have a revolution in America. A revolution of sin. A revolution of drugs, a revolution of sex, a revolution of rebellion. My God in America has been on the downward spiral ever since we turned our back upon God and turned our back on morality and turned our back on the Bible that God established. Oh, hallelujah. We banned the Bible. 
And we begin to teach atheism and evolution. Uh, we banned prayer and replaced it with moments of silence and meditation. Come on here. We mocked morality and taught sex education and situational ethics. To bring that down in small words, it simply means that whatever your situation is, that determines how you act. Just In other words, you know, if you need to lie, if you're just lying to be lying, but, you know, if it's to save life, if you have to lie, oh, no, 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 no. We did away with absolutes, but God's Word is absolute. It's yeas or yea, it's nays or nay. He thundered from Sinai. My God, and the Ten Commandments are not the Ten Suggestions. Hallelujah. Enough of this. Hallelujah. Woo! And so, we went to sex education. And we went to situational ethics. And then they, listen now, they, listen, you, you can't have a prayer group in the school. Uh, you know, you can't, no, 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 we couldn't defile our kids with that. But they'll take your daughters and haul them down through the abortion clinics and will not even ask your permission. Oh, come on here now. Woo! They dug our girls down to the abortion clinics, passed out contraceptive to the boys. Amen. Listen, we changed the foundation. They tried to change the definition of a family from a father and a loving mother to two mommies or two daddies. Ah, get away from me. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Two mommies or two daddies. And if it's not two mommies or two daddies, then we've got a, a vest. We've got, a, I don't know how many kids uh, living with just one uh, one parent, either a mom or a dad. Oh, God, because we have destroyed the foundations of America. Hang on, I'm going to preach to you if God will help me. Listen, we decided we couldn't make it off of what daddy was making and still spoil our kids and make rotten screaming brats out of them. So we sent mama to the factory and we sent our kids to the babysitter. My God, we got what we wanted, but we lost what we had in America. Somebody say man, if you dare. There's a generation that curses their father and doth not bless their mother. There's a generation whose eyes are so lofty. Huh? There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet they're not washed from their filthiness. Oh, come on here now. Sounds like America. Huh? Oh, yes. We got what we wanted. I said we got what we wanted, but we lost what we had. Oh, what did we get when we rebanned the Bible from the classrooms? We got a generation that is filled with violence. Huh? I forgot the date. Maybe something 1940 or something. The, the, they, they said the number one problem in the classroom was chewing gum. Huh? That was the number one problem back in the 30s and 40s, chewing gum. Oh, God. And now, Brother Mike, since we've got so smart, since we've got so high and mighty, and then the Bible, and prayer from our schools, we've got policemen at the doors. We've got mass murderers with young people whose minds are filled with violence, who watch scene after scene of destruction on television until it's like the days of Noah when violence filled the earth and their minds were evil. Continue. Oh, America, you got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. Huh? What do we get? We got a generation that is filled with wickedness. We've got a generation that have been taught that the Ten Commandments are the Ten Suggestions. 
Yeah. Yeah, come on here now. What did we get when we banned prayer from our schools? We've got a generation of children, my God, that curse. They curse the teachers. They curse their moms and dads. They curse authority. Oh, my God, my God. We've got a generation that gives no thanks for the blessings of God upon this great nation. We've got a generation with an astronomical rate of suicide. Why? Because without God, there is no hope. Without God. There is no peace. Without God, there is no rest. America, you got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. We got a generation running on Ridlin. I'm so thankful. I am so thankful. First off, I was raised in a Christian home. Secondly, I'm so thankful that I was born, amen, in the 50s. Oh, God. Because let me tell you something. If there ever was a prime candidate for Ritalin, it would have been me. Yeah. There wasn't any more wiry and jerky and jumpy and devilish than me. Oh, God. I, I was, uh, listen, but you know what? My mom had a thing. She didn't need riddling. She got a switch, and she riddled my legs. Woo! Yeah, she had riddling. It was with a switch, and she riddled my legs. Woo! Until I did the hooky bookie and did the dance. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from them. Woo! We got them on Ridland because we don't want to take them to church. They've got them on Ridland because they don't want to take time to raise them. Come on now. Oh, come on. I said they've got them on Ridland because they're too busy to take time to love them and to care for them and to cherish them. And our charity children have become a burden instead of a blessing. My parents come up to me. You know, there's just trauma in their eyes. I, you just see the trauma in their eyes. Well, Paul, I don't know what I'm going to do with my son. How old is little Johnny? He'll be four next month. Our grandparents, as you see, older folks here, just raised in families seven, eight, nine, and ten. You never drove your mama crazy. You never drove your daddy crazy. Brother, first off, when you come home from school, you have some work to do. You're just cutting wood. Huh? Slopping the hogs and feeding the chickens and cutting the grass and cleaning the... Huh? Huh? Come on now. Oh, come on. That's my God. This, this is just some old cornbread and brown beans preaching, but my God, we need to quit trying to drag the dust off the stars and hand some bales of hay to the spiritual giraffes and just spread a little speed around for the sheep every now and again. Woo! Let me tell you something right now. Just free of charge, you won't, you won't have to pay a dime for this. Discipline is not something you do to your child. It is something you do for your child. I'm going to run it by one more time. I said discipline is not something you do to your child. It is something you do for your child. When you let them throw fits and fall in the floor and back talk you, let me tell you something that is the worst case of, of child abuse in America. 
there is child abuse. Well, let me say it again then. Hallelujah. I said when you don't correct your children and let them back talk and throw fits, and that is child abuse. My son, he can't seem to keep a job. Small wonder. Small wonder. You never made him cut the grass. Huh? I said you never made him cut the grass. You never made him pick his room up. Huh? He don't have any respect for the boss. No small wonder. He didn't have no respect for you. Oh, God, how'd I get off on this? Thank you, Brother Ralph. Is it okay? Is it okay if I keep on I just plowing out a few taters here, buddy? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God, listen. This breaks my heart. I'm telling you right now. It breaks my heart. We take our little daughters and we try to make little Hollywood stars out of them, huh? We let them press around and twist around, huh? They ain't hardly got out of diapers till we put a set of hoes on them. Oh, my God, Joe ain't going to love me now. I said, Joe, not going to love me now, but... I love you anyway. Your brother Ralph said this the last night. All I can tell you is I'm going to shuck her down while this preacher man's here. I didn't come to play games. I come because i got a burden in my heart for God's people. My God, Brother Mike, what they don't understand is this stuff's going to come back. Their children not going to be able to keep a job. Amen. They're going to send those daughters. There's some poor boy that's going to have to marry that girl that never learned how to cook, that never learned how to clean a room, that never learned how to run a vacuum, that had no respect for a mother, had no respect for a dad. It's no wonder our homes are broken, our churches are broken, America's in a mess. We've turned our back on God. We've turned our back on truth. We've turned our back on holiness. Shabbat. Let me say, oh, well, they she got three perfect children. No, I don't have three perfect children. But I tell you what I do have. I've got three children that are serving God. I've got a boy that's a preacher. He's a good preacher. I've got a daughter that's just as fine a girl as ever walked in shoe leather. She's married to a preacher. And my boy Nathan, he got... He's got too much of his daddy and mommy in him. Amen. But, you know, he's a good boy and writes and sings and plays and works in the church. No, no, I didn't do it all right. No, I didn't. But listen, I'm trying to tell you, there's some little ABCs and 101 of raising children. And if we don't get a hold of it, we're going to be weeping in a few years. You're going to be hanging on these altars in a few years. Say, Brother Ralph, Brother Ralph, my son. My son's lost. My daughter's lost. And I don't know why. You did not raise them. You did not correct them. You did not teach them. And they're going to break your heart. A little more. A little more. As a young boy, I'd really been bad. I mean, I'd been bad. No, I hadn't smoked, but I'd been bad. I did angry things. You know what I'm saying? I just had a lot of angriness in me. A lot of kid in me. So I'd been really bad one day. And I come home. My mother took me back in the bedroom. She was crying. She said, Paul, what makes you do these things? 
we've raised you right. We've raised you in church. And she was crying and serious. So, man, I'm looking for a way out. So I clouded up real quick. I said, Mama, I said, the devil makes me do it. Not God of heaven, but I'm like, something happened to that woman. All right, she said. I'm going to beat the devil out of you. Woo! I believe she about got it done that day. Yeah. She come as close to getting it out of me that day as she ever did. She beat me from one side of that room to the other. We had twin beds. I was on one bed, then on the other bed. And she said, when are you going to stop doing these kind of things? I'm getting sick and tired. Oh, Jesus. Finally, I didn't see no sign of letting up. So, man, I tell you, I had to come up with an idea. So I went, oh. and I acted like I fell on the bed. And thank God the bed moved out. And I fell down in between the bed and the wall. And out and let off. Whew. God, have mercy. Hey, that's the truth. Now, I tell, I'm telling you the truth. Whew. I'll tell you right now, I didn't do that no more. Whew. One long after that, I decided I might get saved, get prayed through just right. Got some kind of work of grace or something. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, now listen to me carefully. And I, that's the truth. And I, I, some of you just look so sad. I didn't know if he was going to make it through. I'd give you a little something to help you out here long before I give you another dose of medicine that you can't hardly get that one down. Now, that's the truth. Listen. Oh, glory to God. But you know what? Here, let me tell you something. Listen to me. I'm 50, what, 50 years old now. Amen. You know what? I never grew up like some of these little pointy-headed brats. I hate my daddy. My mama. Why do you hate them? Hey, make me go to church. Hey, make me go to church. Hey, I'll with him. Have mercy. Hallelujah. Better now? <laughs> Listen, I grew up. <laughs> and I love him. <laughs> and I appreciate him. She saved my soul from him. Instead of being a rebel and a drug addict and a bum, my God, she raised me up and I got saved. And I'm here today because a mom and a dad loved me enough to tell me the way right and correct me and discipline me. Hey, mom and dads, wake up! I said wake up! You may get what you want and lose what you have. I gotta hurry. What did we do? And what did we get? When we took the Ten Commandments off the wall, huh? We begin to and we begin to teach sex education and do your own things. What did we get? I'll tell you what we got. One and a half million abortions a year. Four thousand a day. Huh? Sex sexually transmitted diseases at epidemic proportions in America. Huh? Fathers! at 12 years of age. Mothers at 12 and 13 and 14. Y'all still here, aren't you? Children hooked on drugs. Teen rape at drunken parties. My God, my God, my God. Oh, what did we get in exchange for our new homes, our new cars, and our spoiled kids? I'll tell you what we got to we got the highest divorce rate in the world. Huh? We've got infidelity among couples at an all-time high. We've got children with green hair, red eyes, pierced ears, pierced belly buttons, tattoos on their bodies. Oh, my God, my God. Looking for love. Looking for acceptance. Looking for peace. Oh, God. But they're looking at all the wrong places. Oh, you got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. Come on. Come on. Bless him, Lord.
We got what we wanted. I said we got what we wanted, but we lost what we had. It wasn't long. I was probably, I guess, around maybe 14 or 15 when my mother decided that my dad just wasn't making enough money. I love my mother. She's a precious woman. And please, 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 please. She was a wonderful mother. But hear me all the way through, will you? She just wanted more, you know. Just a bigger house. And just nicer things. And so it started out just driving a little bus part-time. And then it got another. And finally, she got a full-time job. And my brother was left at home. <clears throat> my younger, my baby brother. Oh, God. I love him. But I, by, the, by the grace of God... I've been able to pull him back from the brink several times. He's in church now doing good. But oh, several times, this, oh, he almost went so far, I wasn't able to get him back. His two boys, my nephews that I love, he had, we'd moved down to Leesburg, and the boys, was, they was, oh God, they was headed almost out. And God helped me to get them boys. And I, and I went and got them and brought them to church. And my, my nephew Ryan got saved, and then we got Adam in. And finally I got my brother and his wife to move back. And now my nephew, he's preaching, and, and my young other, his brother, is in the church serving God. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. Oh, my mother got that new house, and she got a new car. She got all those things she wanted. But in the midst of all of that, she lost her marriage. And after, I don't know, I guess 30-some years of marriage, after her, my dad broke up. My brother almost lost everything he had. Oh, I want to say, Mama, was it worth it? I said, was it worth it? Was it worth it? Oh, my God. I don't know about you, but I've got to make it. I don't know about you, but my children, my family, is the most important thing in my life. You're going to get what you want, but you're going to lose what you had. i got to hurry. Here's Israel. God's pleading with them. Pleading with them, Israel, what's wrong? What's wrong with you, Israel? I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you out of slavery. I brought you through the Red Sea. I sustained you in the wilderness. I gave you water. I gave you standing water from the brook. Amen. Water from the flinty rock. Amen. You weren't none of you were feeble. Amen. Your clothes didn't wear out. Your shoes didn't wear out. I gave you a cloud by day. I gave you a pillar of fire by night. I don't know who called my shut up a high side. I gave you houses to build in or to live in you never built. I gave you wells of water to drink that you never dug. I gave you fruit trees you never planted. My God, I gave it all to you. I gave it all to you, but you turned your back. You went back on me. You forsook God. You forsook the covenants. You forsook the commandments. I gave you your request, but I said, lead us to your soul. Hear this, preacher, and hear me well tonight. We're in a generation that's working day and night. I don't know when your midweek service is, brother. Wednesday. But it's a sad day. People don't think nothing about working on Wednesday. Boss, come down. Will you work tonight? Sure. 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 Huh? Oh, my, Mr. Church on Wednesday. Huh? Because church is down here on the bottom. Huh? We pay all of our bills. If we got anything left, we'll pay our tithes or give a little money in the offering. Not to feel like preaching here. <clears throat> Let's just tell the truth and shame my devil. There's a lot of you here tonight think you did God a favor to come. And you think you did Brother Ralph a favor to come. And you think you did me a favor to come. Well, guess what? You did do me a favor to come. And you did do both. I mean, we're glad you came. But let me explain something to you. God didn't have to have you here tonight. He'll be God if you never come back. He'll be God if you turn back tomorrow. He'll be God if you shout about. Oh, God don't need you, but you need God. You may get what you want, but 
but you're going to lose what you had. You're going to lose a touch. You're going to lose a power. You're going to lose a shout. You're going to lose a glory. You're going to lose a hallelujah. said, I can't understand why my children don't respect the man of God. No small wonder you don't respect him. Preacher went to the home one night to eat. He knocked on the door and the little boy let him in. He's sitting in the living room. We said, well, sonny boy, said, what do we have for dinner tonight? He said, we have a buzzard. Oh, son, son, he said, we have a buzzard. Yeah, he said, we have a buzzard. Oh, now, son, you know that ain't true. He said, preacher, I'll tell you it's the truth. He said, I heard Mama tell Daddy the other day. She said, we just might as well have the old buzzard and get it over with. <laughs> the preacher. <laughs> yeah. We'll just have the old buzzard and get it over with. Woo! Listen, if you want your children to respect men of God, you have got to respect men of God. the way that he should go. They should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. Well, I brought them to church. Yeah. Let them sit on the back seat and chew gum and laugh and carry on. You never got in. I said you never got in. I said you never got in. You never worshiped God. You never read your Bible. You never prayed. You did not train them up. You brought them to church and left it to Brother Ralph. I never, I never have trained any horses or dogs or nothing like that, you know. But I tell you what I know. I tell you what I do know. I tell you what I know. If you're going to train a horse, I tell you what you can't do. You can't just take him out to the track and say, four laps, first one slow, second one faster, third one a little faster, and the last one, turn it on and just let him go. Huh? It won't work well. Huh? It won't work like that. You know, just, you know, you've got to take them, though. You get on them, you ride them, you lead them, you know, you teach them. Oh, glory. If you want your children to pray, let me tell you how you do it. My God, you get down on your knees and you pray. If you want your children to read the Bible, throw the sports page away and your magazines away and your love books away and get a hold of the Bible. Let's get back to God. Let's get back to living right and seeking God. Oh, we're going to just guard the ashes. I'm going to hurry. I'm ready. I'm not going to preach a lot longer. A little more time. I'm going to go a little longer tonight than I normally go. The Bible said they soon forgot. They forgot the miracles. They forgot the blessings. They forgot what God did for them. Oh, God. Some of us have forgot. We forgot the pence, the pit from whence he dug us. Huh? I said we have forgot the pit from whence he dug us. Whew. Oh, I'm going to say it one more time. I said, we have forgot the pit from whence he dug us. And we've taken his blessings for granted. We've taken his goodness for granted. We've taken our church for granted. 
We've taken our pastor for granted. We've taken his good wife for granted. We've taken the men of God for granted. Oh, God, get a hold of us. I said, get a hold of us before we lose what we have. he said guess who suffered your kids passed through the fire yeah you got so far from God you let your children lay in the arms of idols of Baal while fire and flame came up they built they built uh, groves around them and had these altars made in the shape of Baal and then they set the fires and they took their babies to their idolatrous, idolatrous groves and laid their little babies in the arms of Baal and they burned up even over top the shrieks and the cries they gave their children to idols that's what's going on when we turn our backs on God that's what's going on with these kids and dressed in gothic black hair oh listen we've offered them to the gods of fire we put them in the arms of Baal and sin is going to destroy them because America has turned its back upon God oh. hallelujah oh you got what you wanted I said you got what you wanted but you lost what you had. Oh, listen, Samson just could not stay away from Gaza. His mom and daddy said, Son, can't you ever be satisfied with a woman from your own tribe? Yeah, them holiness girls. They're not flashy enough for me. They talk to you unmarried boys wherever you are here. Huh? Listen to me, boys. That little old floozy doozy. Amen. Flipping and snipping and clipping and dipping. And eyes look like two burnt holes in a sheet. Amen. My God. Huh? You hearing me? And she's... Hi, Daddy. Huh? Uh, old stupid Samson. Went right down. I said he went right on down. Hey Amen. Listen. His mama said, son, you better watch out. You better watch out. It seemed like to me when he woke up and the Philistines went on him, something would have turned on in his mind. Hey, something going on. This woman don't love me. But he kept going back until he got what he wanted. But he lost what he had. His eyes were burned out. He was put in fetters. He was taken to the prison house. He was left to grind in the prison house. Oh, hear me, young boys. If you don't stay with God, if you don't stay with church, you'll make it what you want. But you're going to lose what you had. Listen to me, girls. The devil would love to wipe the innocence off your face. Mar and scar you. Mar your name and drag you in the mud. Leave you with some old drunken boy that'll beat you and cuss you. Oh, God. Listen, this preacher man's begging you. Stay in here. Stay with God. Stay in church. Better to want something you don't have than to have something you don't want. Got what they wanted. I said they got what they wanted. But they lost. I said they lost what they had. Oh, listen. Let me let me say some young ladies. You may not understand it. You 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 and, and listen, you can't because you're just children. And I was just you know, I was a kid, believe it or not, believe it or not, one time I was your age. And I was your you know, believe it or not, I come right up the ladder. I didn't skip no birthdays. So I come right on up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm on up to where I'm at now. But hear me. Hear this preacher. God have mercy. These are the best days of your life. These are the best days of your life. They're well. Got to wash the dishes. Got to clean my room. Hey, girls. Guess what you're going to do when you marry that little sweet boy? You'll wash the dishes. Sweep the floors. Clean the beds. Wash his stinking clothes. Cook his meals. 
you got it made in the shade with all expenses paid, drink and pick lemonade. Hallelujah. Woo. Hey, boys, let this old preacher man give you a clue here. Huh? And listen, there's nothing wrong with marriage. The Bible said he's a fine wife. That's a fine wife. It's a good thing. Don't misunderstand me. You get a good one, but let me tell you. Son, yes, you got it made right now. Huh? Because when you say, I do, or she says he does, or I say he will, or I will, or he she says he will. Huh? You understand? From that day forward, you got to make all the money and pay all the bills and take care of that little woman and buy pack after pack after pack after pack of hose and bottle after bottle after bottle of hairspray and store after store after store of dresses and skirts and shoes. Oh, glo- Hallelujah. Hey, listen here. Ah, yeah, it's great, but listen. Oh, don't, don't be so anxious. I said don't be so anxious. And you feel like, well, if I don't get married by the time I'm 15, it'll all be over. Or 20, what? Listen. Wait on God. Wait on the right girl. Wait on the right husband. Go to God. It'll be worth it to get the one that God's got for you. Oh, you may get what you want and lose what you have. So, can't you just obey God? I mean, do you just have to have the sheep? Do you just have to disobey God? I mean, yeah, I'm just going to do it. Fine, you're going to get what you want, but you're going to lose what you had. You're going to lose the touch. You're going to lose the anointing. You're going to lose the crown. You're going to be left as a castaway. I'm closing. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change. I'm not trying to steal anything. I'll steal a little bit. Just a little bit. That's all I need. Yeah, anybody got any change? I got some change. Thank you, buddy. I'm not. Hey, let me close. Let me close. I got to hurry. Here's a man. He's fingered something. What he got, son? It's just dirty pieces of silver. I just thought I had to have it. I didn't. Re- I didn't really want to lose my Lord. I didn't really want to see me crucified. I, I didn't really think they'd take him. I didn't really think they'd get him. I just wanted a little money. Oh, what's wrong, Judas? Here, I betrayed the innocent blood. Here's your money. Give me back, Jesus. Man, we don't care about that. We wanted the Jesus, and we got him. He threw the money down. He got what he wanted, but he lost. I said he lost. He lost what he had. Don't waste your soul. Don't lose the touch of God. Don't gamble away your future. Don't give away God. Don't give up on Christ for money, for women, for fame, for fortune. You may get what you want, but you lose what you had. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight for your word, for your will, for your way. God, I've done the best I could. Oh, 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 God. oh, God, some young boy, some young girl, some mama, some daddy. Oh, God, they get what they want and lose what they have. Oh, Jesus, I've got to have you. I don't have to have a new home. I don't have to have a new car. I don't have to have new clothes. But I have got to have you. Oh, Lord, I've got to have you. And I pray, oh, God, tonight for that young boy, that young girl, that sin is pulling on. For that mama, that daddy, that sin is pulling on. Oh, God. Oh, God. That may lose what they've got. Oh, God. Oh, God, they'll get what they want, and you'll send leanness to their souls. 
Help someone tonight to seek God. Help someone tonight to fall in His altars and say, God, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. And I won't turn back. No, I won't turn back. Let's stand tonight. When I was a boy, we spent much of our time in the basement of my home. I had two sisters, older sisters, that could play and sing, oh, I loved to hear them sing and play. When they were just, I think, 16 or 17, they had a talent contest at the high school there. My sisters entered in that contest. And they sang the only gospel song sang that day. They had rock and roll bands. They had everything you could imagine. I remember they, I went over and I played the tambourine while my sisters played and sang with their long hair and their long dresses. They won the talent contest. My sister Deanna, my oldest sister, beautiful long black hair, married a boy, Paul. Big old broad shoulder, curly black hair, nice looking boy. And just a fine guy as you'd ever want to meet. He got called to preach, and they did a little preaching here and there. But my sister wanted things. She wanted houses. She wanted new cars. My brother in law, he's just a common guy, just raised on a farm. Well, my sister had to have things. So at the age of 20, God spoke to me. I turned the keys into my new car, my demonstrator. Turned my back on a good job. Put all my stuff in the back of an old white station wagon. Went on the stretch for God. I came home at Christmas. I'll never forget his sister did Pulled up in the yard, my old wagon. There was a beautiful blue Cadillac with a white top on. I got out and I went in. And there was my sister. That lovely black hair had been cut. I began to cry. A little bit later, my brother in law pulled in his new Jeep, the CJ5 Jeep with the chrome bumper. He always called me Puppy Dog. He said, hey, Puppy Dog, get on in here. and said, take a ride in my Jeep. And we took a ride in the Cadillac. He began to tell me about how he bought this, and he bought that, he had this, and he had that. The devil said to me, man, look at you. You ain't going to have nothing. Before I got back the next time, before I got back home, after I left after Christmas, when I before I got back home, I got to call, pray for your sister, pray for Roger. He's drinking. Him and Deanna's having a rough time. Looks like they may break up. <laughs> they broke up. They're still broke up. My sister's already been through another husband. She's he cheated on her, left her. She's alone again. Lost. Broken. I said, lost. Broken. They got what they wanted. But they lost what they wanted. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. By God's grace and help, I want to stay with one of our friends, and I won't call his name because I, there's no point. I'm not going to hurt him, but 
a friend we loved, a preacher that we loved. He got what he wanted, Brother Ralph. He got what he wanted. But he lost. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, Brother Jamie, if he could do it all, if he could rewind the tape, I said if he could rewind the tape, he'd stay with God. He'd stay in church. He'd stay at an altar. He'd get a hold of God. I want to beg you tonight, whoever you are, boy or girl, mom or dad, whoever, I want to beg you to get in these altars and get a hold of God and make up your mind you're going to stay with God. Oh, the world has nothing but heartache. The world has nothing but tears. The world has nothing but broken dreams. Stay with God. I want our young people to come first, all of our young people. I want you to come first. Come on. I want you to stand right up here. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. If if you have a child up here, I want you to come. Get behind that child. And if you don't have a child, then just come and get behind some of these. Or, or, listen, or, if you just feel tonight, you need to settle some things with God. Just hit these altars. Let's get a hold of God. Come on, everybody. More than fame, wealth, or desire.